Thank you, Mr. President. Somalia have been two decades in conflict, more than two decades. That resulted since 1991, thousands of Somalis have left their country. The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugee estimates that Africa accounts for nearly one third of the world's 68 million forced migrants, including 6.3 million refugees and 14.5 million internally displaced persons. Somalia, unfortunately, constitute a large part of the number. This is matter of immediate importance and occupies a lot of our thinking in Somalia at this time. Refugees have been center of attention of the humanitarian community for decades. The international community, more broadly, remains very ill-equipped to deal with internal displacement. Internally displaced people, however, are predominantly the issue for the countries where displacement originates, which is not in the least complicated by the nearly that government somehow have responsibility for the cause of their displacement. Even in terms of fleeing to protect them against displacement, this is tragedy particularly as the number of IDBs in Africa and outnumbered that outnumbers that refugee by two to one Africa has the unique advantage of having the Kambala Convention which needs to be ratified by all members of the AU and it should be accompanied by a strong implementation framework which can be subscribed to by the borderless international community. In Somalia, we are particularly aware of that fact, the need of a refugee and IDBs outstrips our capacity as is indeed in most host countries with the global interconnectivity and the reality, reality of ever escalating immigration trend. A true global effort is required to address the underlying causes to displacement. The international community more broadly reminds very equipped to deal with international displacement, internal displacement. It is becoming more and more evident that national ownership to our solutions, particularly return and uh, reintegration, is absolutely necessary. If our solutions are to be sustainable, at the same time, return is a relatively concept, mass urbanization and urban drift of rural population is a reality and cannot be wished away. And must be seen as a part of more comprehensive and rural development programs. Urbanization instead should be closely linked to the fact that the camp situation 
whether they are related to internal of or external displacement, are certain to change the outlook of the displacement persons towards an urban lifestyle under expectation. This will have dramatic effect on the shift towards urban livelihoods, which is at odds with most, participation, most perceptions of how people make living on this continent today. It is, however, and unfortunately already a reality irreversible. We are leaning that displacement solution are not a humanitarian issue. They are solidly anchored in sustainable development and state building. The international community has moved on from seeing displacement as a scam issue to it being part of building a resilient state which provides not only protection to its citizens, but also a viable livelihood. This was clearly demonstrated by various field efforts by well-intending donors on the continent to build model return villages, which fail to address the reality that returning IDBs and refugees required different livelihoods to those they were posted before they were displaced. Moreover, many of them were actually born in camps, so return in their case means something entirely different to going back to where from the one scam. Displaced people particularly, internally displaced, find themselves systematically at the bottom of the socio-economic ladder. Most importantly, they lacked protection from their own governments, which is the reason why they were displaced in the first place. In some cases, their national government may actually have played a more than passive role in their displacement. Addressing the underlying causes to displacement, therefore, is in the hands of national governments and required strong ownership and leadership of, uh, of the countries of origin. Given this grim reality, we are of the view that the critical to the solution in Somalia, bringing about peace, the building of effective institution of the state and sustainable economic development. Thus, for our parliament, we must be guided by this imperative when reviewing and passing legislation, legislations. The overriding pressure is for us to implement conflict prevention measures, including by silencing the guns to promote a culture of reconciliation. We want to strengthen conflict management mechanism at both the national and regional level. Despite significant resources constraints and the limited capacity for receiving the large number of refugees flowing into our urban centers, it is our local authority that continue to shoulder the burden. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Draman. Now we're going to listen to the speaker of uh, the Parliament of Libya, who wants to take the floor.